and welcome to James Lessons Expressing, where we get you as best as possible. My throat still hurts from being sick, but hey, gotta do what you gotta do. Talking about wild card weekend. I was right on two games, wrong on two games. <clears throat> but hey, how could I account for the Chiefs Titans game where Travis Kelsey got hit helmet to helmet, got a concussion, knocked out of the game? But here's the thing. That was helmet to helmet. That's how he got his concussion. Refs never called it. Like, hello, that's a 15-yard penalty. Other calls that made no sense that allowed the Titans to come back. And then earlier today, Jeff Triplett's one of the refs from the game yesterday, retired. I'm like, huh? I wonder how much money just ended up in his bank account. Now, yes, that's conspiracy theory talk of, yeah, the guy blew calls here and there all game long in favor of the Titans. Then as soon as the Titans win, he immediately retires. Maybe he just realized, nah, he's too old for this. He's blowing too many calls. He's better retire before he gets fired. Ah. Poor Alex Smith. Well, still did better than the 49ers and Colin Kaepernick. Oh, wait. Everyone's done better than Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick doesn't play anymore. Ha. Suck it, 49ers. Ah. How do you blow a 21 to 3 lead? Hmm. Let's ask the Falcons about blowing leads. Hmm. Uh, but speaking of, Falcons over Rams. In my uh, one video, someone pointed out that the Rams have sucked at home. The Rams have been the away team. They probably would have won. It's like, huh, you got a good point. Like, their home record was just abysmal versus their away record. And hey, who knows? The Falcons did it last year. They could do it again this year. They could buck the Super Bowl curse. <clears throat> Get all the way to the playoffs. Through to the Super Bowl. Is that actually going to happen? I mean, yeah, they did beat up the Rams. And the Rams have not been a bad team. It's not like the Rams snuck in because of like one last second play call or an injury on the other team. Like, no, they earned their way into the playoffs this year. And the Falcons beat them. But back to AFC. Wow, what a stinker between the Jags and the Bills. My God, it was all defense. All defense. I mean, if Blake Bortles didn't suck so much, maybe the Jags would have an easier time winning. But, man. Like, watching that game is like, come on. Like, I want to poke it with a stick. Do something. Come on, offense on either team. Do something. Uh. Poor Bills fans, you finally, you finally come back to the playoffs for the first time in the 21st century, and then you lose. And not just lose, but you did nothing. Yes, the Jags are the number one top scoring defense and all that, but Blake Bortles is terrible. You couldn't beat him. God, can you imagine what the Jags are going to be like next year when they have a real quarterback? Uh, obviously, of course, Tom Cobb looks like now when it's with Blake Bortles, even though he's the reason we lose games. But if I was him, I'd be like, hey, you know, you got Jimmy G, you got Case Keenum, you got Teddy Bridgewater, you got all kinds of free agents hitting the market next year. Now, yes, Jimmy G probably offered all the money by the 49ers, and Teddy Bridgewater probably resigned by the Vikings and stuff, but still, you never know. And if the Bill Belichick, Robert Kraft, Tom Brady feud keeps going on. Bill, could you imagine Bill Belichick goes to the Jags and then he gets Jimmy G to come over? Because apparently that's where the tension started was that Bill Belichick wanted to keep Jimmy G, but Kraft said no, Tom Brady. So can you imagine Bill Belichick leaves the Patriots, goes to the Jags, brings in Jimmy G. <whistles> Talk about new dominating force in the AFC. And then for the last of the NFC Championship games, there's a chance it's really NFC playoff games. Saints, Black Kitties. Ah. The Panthers are already being the Vikings, so I was a little worried about them winning. And while the Vikings had already been the Saints, that was week one, when the Saints weren't firing all cylinders. The Saints were still trying to figure out their backfield. Now, this could be an issue. 
yes, I have faith in my Vikings, but man, that's still Drew freaking Breeze. But I feel that our defense is better than their defense. And so even if our offense is on par, even their offense is a little better, I think our offense will be able to beat their defense easier than their offense will be able to beat our defense. Man. But, and some of those plays calls, like, obviously, like we did with the Titans Chiefs, so the Jeff Triplets, the head, helmet to helmet call that wasn't called, holding penalties that if it was a regular season game probably would never have been called, or the game was closer, probably wouldn't have been called. Was this being a blow? I was like, oh, we got to try to save the Titans and make this game not so humiliating. Or uh, the Bills Jaguars, where the last interception thing was like, and here's a picture of the ball on the ground. He did not have his hands under it. That was not an interception. The NFL needs to do something about their stupid catch rule. Depending on the referee, it's a catch or not a catch. Like, no, it should not be up to the referee if it's a catch or not. It should be up to the rule if it's a catch or not. It shouldn't be, oh, wait, we got this referee playing today, so you don't even need to catch the ball. Just get the ball within, like, five feet of our receiver. He's going to call it a catch. Well, this referee, like, oh, crap, just do all run game. Got to come down, take eight steps, kneel, and then he'll say, oh, not a catch. Like, no, you need to take that away from the rest and give it back to the rule. Make one simple rule. Either it's a catch or it's not a catch. Not, oh, well, it's this ref, so it's going to be a catch. Oh, it's that ref. It's not going to be a catch. Ah, man. This is the most I've talked all day. Like, I haven't even done any live streams today because I, my throat just hurts too much. Anyways, let's talk about next week. I've already mentioned a bit before about Viking Saints. Vikings will be hosting. That's going to be a huge boost for them. And... I mean, like I said, our defense is better than do their defense. So even with Drew Brees, Alvin Kamara, and all that are a little, maybe a little bit better than our offense. I think in the end, because our defense is a bit way better than theirs. Right, maybe not way better, but it is better than theirs. That will be the difference. And of course, home field advantage. Although, hey, look at the Chiefs. They didn't. They had home field advantage, and it wasn't that much of an advantage for them, was it? Ah, uh, terrible. Same thing with the Rams. The, how the Rams never had home field advantage all year, apparently. Their home record was terrible. And second with the NFC, Falcons, Eagles. Eagles had that extra week of rest, but they still got Nick Foles and not Carson Wentz. The Falcons, like, I'm surprised they made I mean, they stuck their way into the playoffs. One loss here, uh, another team gets a win there. They weren't going to be in it, but... They made it, and hey, once you make it in, that's all you need. Look at the 7-9 Seahawks who hosted a playoff game and won. So, but they'll be going to the Philadelphia Eagles in the north, where it's going to be freaking cold out because it's in winter. So, depending on the weather conditions, I mean, if it's super cold, let's look at the Vikings-Packers game where it's so cold, it's like, eh, no one can catch the ball because it's not a ball, it's a rock. It's just so cold, the ball's just a rock and not a ball. So that could totally eliminate the air game, depending on how cold it's going to be, and the wind and the snow. So it might be come down to who has a better ground game. And for that, I have to say, the Eagles might actually have the better ground game. So I'm going to have to say between the Falcons, Eagles. I mean, of course, that depends on weather conditions. I'm going to... I'm going to say, no, it's going to be the 6th seed. The 6th seed will come in and beat the Eagles. Calling it now. Falcons over Eagles. Just watch me be wrong again. Anyways. So right now I have Vikings over Saints. Falcons over Eagles. Now with the AFC. Patriots versus the Losers. I mean, the Titans. Titans, I thought would do a lot better this year. And because I thought they were going to be that good. But they got lucky and luckier and luckier. And the luck ran out. It's like, oh, they're not even going to make it to the playoffs. And then suck their way in. And again, all you need to do is sneak your way in. Once you're in, you have a shot. Beat the Travis Kelsey less Chiefs. And a lot of help from Jeff Triplets and the other officials. Will they get that same kind of help against the Patriots? I highly doubt it. 
<sighs> but hey, maybe the luck will continue and they'll get lucky, but I highly doubt it. Again, this is going to be another game that's going to be in the north, so it's going to be fucking cold. It's going to be weather conditions. But I'm about to say, right here, right now, it's going to be Patriots. It's, eh, it's going to be, I'm going to guess a double-digit win at least. It's going to be 14 to 21-point win difference. Easy. For the Patriots, they're going to crush the Titans. Then, of course, Steelers versus Jags. If the Jags had a good quarterback, this would be competitive. But the Jags don't. The Jags have Blake Bortles. And once again, we're gonna, how is every single game this year going to be in the freaking north? And not only that, but in outdoor stadiums, except for the Vikings, because the Vikings are the only ones smart enough to put a dome over their stadium. So again, you got to worry about weather conditions, but, oh no, they got out of the run game. Steelers way better in that department, too. So while the Jags might have the better defense, is it going to be enough to overcome Big Ben? Is it going to be enough to come overcome Le'Veon Bell? Is it going to be enough to overcome Antonio Brown coming back? Well, let's say Antonio Brown's 100%. You just do with him like what the Patriots do with Randy Moss. Like, no, oh, screw it. Throw him out there. He'll be double covered. This guy's going to be open. Don't ever throw, don't even think about throwing the ball to him. But as long as he's out there, he's going to be double covered because he's that good. Man. So, yeah, but it's going to be, it's got to be the Steelers. I'm sorry, Jags, but it's going to be the Steelers. But hey, just think, next year, you could have a new quarterback. You could, you might have a new coach. Who knows what you might have next year. But as far as this year is, it's going to be Patriots, Steelers, AFC Championship game. It's going to be Falcons, Vikings, NFC Championship game. Hopefully, unlike with Gary Anderson, it's not going to come down to a last second field goal that we miss. Hopefully, we'll be able to go in and beat the Dirty Birds and get to the Super Bowl. Hosting the Super Bowl. Yay! And yeah, we don't have a very good track record there either. But it's probably going to be us versus the Patriots. But man, and again, if you comment, I will respond. Check out the 2017 playoff video I did last week. People comment, I respond. I love talking about football. So please comment, talk about football. And as always, like, subscribe, comment down below, and have a wonderful day.